Dr. Paul, how do you get your teenager to focus? I should know. I raised a bunch of teenagers and a lot of them had a lot of trouble with focus. And I look back on that experience and I didn't do a very good job. And you know, if you're a parent and you're trying to parent a teen who is not focusing, you know exactly what I'm talking about. It is tough. The brains of our kids these days are so wired for instant gratification. And this has to do with screen time. We thought technology was our friend. We thought that technology was giving us access to all this information. Turns out that we've lost something very important because we have all our information at our fingertips. And that is that pondering, that um, thought process that goes into gathering of information, that ability to focus and dig deep. Interesting, boys have much more difficulty with focus than girls. That's a fact. ADD, ADHD is four or five times more prevalent in boys and it tends to be more severe. That's not saying there aren't girls who are struggling with severe ADD or ADHD. There are, but it's affecting our boys more. Guess who does the most gaming? Now, I'm not saying girls don't game, they do, but boys in our society spend a lot of time on games. The makers of video games, They've got it dialed in. They want you excited and instant gratification and interaction and constantly upping the game so that you're constantly at it and at it. And it's almost that adrenaline rush. It's addictive, intentionally addictive. And when you spend a lot of time in that mode, I'm sorry to say it, I'm not anti games, but you are pushing every last bit of your neurotransmitters, your dopamine, your norepinephrine, the same neurotransmitters we need for focus, get depleted. And you're just left by the end of it, washed out, unable to focus. Now wake up and go to school and focus, kid. We've got to reduce, I'm talking significantly reduced screen time. Number two, what's your sleep like? I remember raising my kids, I went to bed before they did. Learned later, many of them were, you know, into the wee hours of the morning before they fall asleep. And then they got to get up and go to school a few hours later. Sleep deprivation is a stress and it is a guaranteed you're going to have trouble with focus. So what we call sleep hygiene, this is again for teenagers, you have to enlist them somehow into the value of this. And I can't say I'm a master at that because I failed horribly with my own kids, but all right, I, I got to jump in. What's going on guys? Noah here, Dr. Paul's son. I think my dad, Dr. Paul's appraisal of his efforts and his execution as a parent are a little harsh. My memory of him as a parent was that he was happy, he was energetic, he was helpful, he was kind, he was consistent, he was hardworking, seldom got angry, and he seemed like he was trying all the time to give us every chance in the world to be successful, to try things, to have opportunities. And I just had to throw that out there because watching this back, he's hard on himself, harder on himself than I would hope to be if I were in his shoes, considering what I remember about our childhood and the stresses we put him through as kids, there being like a bazillion of us. So I love you. You kicked a lot of ass, dad, and uh, you should take it easy on yourself. I'm sure other parents should do the same. Getting them on board again to how wonderful it would be if you woke up refreshed, you woke up, you weren't tired, and you had had a good night's sleep. It's amazing. It's very interesting. I did research on melatonin and young children, we're talking like school age, have very high melatonin levels naturally. Melatonin is that hormone our pineal gland in our brain produces that makes you sleepy and tired. What I learned was even in teen years, the amount of melatonin we make is minuscule, half or a quarter of what a school age kid or a toddler would be making. So it might behoove you to consider with your trusted healthcare provider, a little supplement of melatonin in the evening that can help some people. Let's talk about maybe the foundational, most important thing to all health. And this is going to really benefit focus. And that is nutrition. I cannot, emphasize enough the importance of minimizing toxins and getting your nutrients. One of the biggest source of toxins for all of us, kids, 
teens, adults, is what we eat and what we drink. It's hard to control the air. I mean, you can get an air purifier for your room or your home, and that's worth doing if you can afford doing that. But your water should be better than tap water. I'm sad to say most municipal tap water has residues of pharmaceuticals. There's plenty of residues of, of uh, pesticides, herbicides, not to mention other potential problems and added chlorine, which is not healthy. So you need good filtration, whether at the very least it's a tabletop filter system or if you've got a reverse osmosis charcoal filtration system, something so that you're eliminating the chlorine and most of the toxins out of that water. Food is the biggest source because most of us are not eating true organic produce. The two biggest sources of problems in our food system is one, the CAFO, those concentrated feeding lot operations where you've got animals just crammed into these small spaces, whether it's chicken warehouses or pig warehouses or cattle in these feeding lots. This is not resulting in healthy food. If at all possible, find a, a local farmer, get free range meat, grass fed beef, that sort of thing. That's a huge help. Secondly, when it comes to your produce, we're talking fruits and vegetables, this is where organic is key. You can go to the environmental working group and get the clean 15 or the dirty dozen. And that means, okay, these dirty dozen, these 12 foods they have figured out have the highest concentration of pesticides and herbicides and toxins. In the clean 15, you can probably slide and not be organic. If you can't focus, right? We're talking about focus here. Your cells, your brain cells that are supposed to be communicating at millions of connections every second are struggling. And we communicate best when our cells have optimal nutrients and optimal energy. Even with organic produce, there are certain nutrients that you just don't get enough of from food. If there was one supplement you absolutely must have, it's vitamin D and I like D3 with K2. There's a reason for that. D3 helps you absorb calcium. It's also a hormone that's in a lot of pathways that are important, but that calcium needs to be stored in the bone and that's where the K2 comes in. So consider getting yourself D3 with K2. Next is mitochondrial support. The mitochondria are those little, if you remember from back from biology in, in high school, if you had it, the, they, they, there was these little organelles within the cell that make energy, ATP. And we have millions and millions of mitochondria acting every second, like I think it's millions of times. We're talking billions of reactions happening all the time to make our energy. They need certain nutrients. Mostly they're the B vitamins, but there's also a couple other elements that you need. So making sure you've got a good multivitamin that's proper and, and supporting those pathways. This isn't gonna make a day and night change for your teenager, but it's gonna start providing them the, the foundation for energy that they can then turn into focus. And then finally, I will just add, if you're in a real crisis, don't hesitate to seek health care professional support. But here's most important, the final ingredient, no matter what, is love. You should try your darndest, I, I wasn't very good at this, to give unconditional love. Teens will push you, right? They're gonna push you to the limit. And we tend, at least I did, to, to push back instead of just being a loving, supportive, nurturing person for them as they went through their struggles. I guess I took it personally, like I was not doing my job as a parent, failing as a parent, and then, no, don't take it personal. Be that fountain of love for them as they work through this so they know they can come to you for support. And you just have to ask more than how was your day? It was fine, that's what I would do. That's the answer I would get. And you've gotta get a little more specific and be a little more involved in your kids' lives and uh, be there for them. Hope that was helpful. I'm Dr. Paul.